Whether you are into horror or not really, in my opinion, this show is one that you should definitely consider checking out. As to why, stick around. Hey everyone, my name is Austin and this channel is all about helping you to dig deeper and go further to better understand faith, film, and everything in between. If that is exciting to you, you are in the right place and you can subscribe to my channel for a new video every week. The Haunting of Hill House has been one of my absolute favorite shows since it was initially released last year in October of 2018 on Netflix. This show tells the incredible and emotionally investing story of the Crane family and how a summer from their childhood spent in a mysterious old house changed their lives forever. I just finished watching the show for the second time this past weekend, and it was only a little less scary, which was nice, but it was just as emotionally impactful. I will be dipping into spoilers at one point in this video, so if you have not seen the show and care about things being spoiled for you, be looking for my heads up when I move into that part of the discussion. This video will have three separate sections. First, characters, second, filmmaking, and finally, story, which is where I'll go into the spoilers, so you're safe until then if you have not seen this show. And hopefully by that point I've convinced you to check it out if you have not. Each individual quality of this show is to the absolute highest level. From the story, to the characters, to the cinematography, and even the set design. And though this show does fall into the horror genre, and absolutely earns that, the dramatic aspect of this show is one of the biggest aspects of what brings me back. Alright, now let's start with character. You can clearly see, you can clearly see the time that went into the shaping of each of these characters and everything that they do and say. My personal favorite characters from the show are probably Luke and Nell. I feel like of everyone in the show in the family, they have the most convicting character arcs, in my opinion. As an adult, Luke has this struggle with a drug addiction, and it is incredibly conveyed in a very raw and authentic way. While Nell's emotional and personality state as a grown-up is just heartbreaking to me. Every member of the cast was perfectly cast, from the adult versions of the family to the kid and younger versions of some of the family members each of them is extremely well done, and they even have a lot of physical likenesses to the other counterpart. Now, right off the bat, I want to say that the biggest lesson I think we can learn from the Crane family in this show is that of forgiveness. As adults, they spend so long in the show just refusing to give up on the hurt of their past. In every scene, they're just teetering the edge of that such closeness to forgiveness. But they, because of that hurt and past, they can't help but just lean back towards their other tendencies. Being moments away from both forgiveness and love, but because of these scars and anger, they just hold it in. Now, each member of this family kind of has a different character arc, obviously, and a different kind of theme that they each kind of address and go through, and it's broken down in each of these episodes. I already mentioned Luke and his addiction to drugs, so there's a very prominent message about addiction in this show. Nell is with that of companionship, and both the good and bad side of how that can affect you. Steve struggles a lot with lying and truth. Cheryl struggles greatly with issues of pride, and Theo struggles a lot with closeness. And also, their father, Hugh, struggles a lot with the issue of just secrecy and protecting his family. And I'll get into that a little bit more when we talk about story. Okay, filmmaking. From a filmmaking perspective, this show is nearly perfect. I'm not kidding. Mike Flanagan, who wrote and directed the show, is a master. The transitions from past to current time periods are very creative and seamless. Cross-editing is often used to compare their childhood feelings to their adult hurt, and it really takes the storytelling to an incredible and deep level. And if you have a really keen eye, the show hides ghosts in so many of its frames, and it's brilliant. I, even on my second watch through, know for a fact I missed a bunch of them. I picked up on some new ones that I missed on the first go-through, but I know I still missed a ton of them, and it just adds an extra level of 
eeriness to the show, just seeing a ghost just staring down one of the characters in the scene, and it's like, it's right there! So again, if you have a keen eye, keep an eye out. There are lots and lots of hidden ghosts in this show. Now I know this is probably one of the big reasons you're here if you have seen this show. Episode 5 and Episode 6, Bent Neck Lady and Two Storms. Again, as close to perfect as possible. The two episodes are masterpieces. Episode 5 is the main episode that focuses on Nell and her story, and how this house is still affecting her as an adult, and it leads to an absolutely well-earned and mind-bending twist at the end of the episode. And don't worry, I won't spoil it yet, not till we get to the story. Episode 6, again, masterpiece is the only word I can think of at the moment to describe this episode. The majority of this episode is told through extended tracking shots. And a tracking shot is when a camera moves around to different positions to follow the actors. And in this episode, the majority of the episode is two continuous shots that are about 15 to 25 minutes each. And they're incredible. There's some behind the scenes stuff that you can watch of how they put all this together. And they go into how they had to design the set for the entire show just with this episode in mind, knowing they were going to be jumping time periods throughout the episode and still wanted to maintain that continuous shot. It's incredible to look at this detail that goes into it and it pays off perfectly and is worth every second of it. I can only imagine how much time and rehearsal went into planning this episode in particular. It is truly something you need to experience on your own to fully appreciate. So, now we're jumping into story. I'm not going to go into spoilers immediately, but if you want to be safe, duck out now, go watch the show, come back when you've seen it all, and we can talk about some of these spoilers. So, very first, I want to touch more on Nell's story. Her episode, episode 5, The Bent Neck Lady, again, masterpiece, incredible, but I loved just the inner turmoil that she experiences throughout this episode. I said in the beginning, she just has this heartbreaking story that just makes you want to wrap your arms around her and give her a big hug like I'm so sorry for everything you've had to deal with it's amazing and then to just see this journey that she's been going on ever since she was a little girl and this fear that she's had of losing people and not being heard to then come around to the twist ending of she being the ghost of the bent neck lady who has been haunting her since the beginning. It's, I got goosebumps just talking about it. It's incredible storytelling, that episode in particular. Obviously all the other kids' episodes are great as well, but this one is just like, oh my gosh, you... Yeah. Some people didn't fully appreciate where everything went in the end, and kind of thought the ending was like a little bit, oh, it's a bit out there, and didn't love it. I, especially on my second watch through, I enjoyed it on my first watch through. I feel like I understood it even more going through the show a second time, knowing where the story was going and being able to focus more on the details along the way. I think it gave me a deeper understanding and appreciation for how Mike Flanagan chose to end this show. And I want to focus mostly on a lot of the final lines that were given from the characters. A lot of these came from Steve and then some others as well. So towards the end, there's a voiceover that is given by Steve. And he's just talking about ghosts and relationships and marriage and all these different things that have gone on inside of Hill House even before their family spent time there. And he talks about how inside we're a horror. And I think that's just a great way of relating the horror genre to that of Christianity because we can do whatever we want. I do all this work to set up these videos so I can look nice, I got a nice set and all that, but like inside I'm a sinner just like everyone else and I got some nasty parts to my inside but each and every day I seek God so that he can help to purify that and help to make me a new creation. So I really like that line that just says, look, inside we're a horror. Again with that, another thing Steve says is just, our childhood can haunt us. And I really like the different metaphors and analogies that he uses while talking about these horror elements and the ghost story type stuff, but really have a lot to do with 
real life and humanity. So just like this story is told, our childhood can haunt us. Things that happen in our past, they shape who we become as adults, both of the good and bad aspects of that. And the main story that goes on with some but Hugh and also the children's mother is that as she kind of descends into the state of madness from all the ghosts in the house, in particular Poppy, and she, Poppy's trying to convince her to kill her children, essentially, so that she can keep them safe in the house. She essentially tells her, you know, the world is a dangerous place with sharp, gnashing teeth, and it wants to destroy them. So you need to do this if you want to keep your children safe with you. And one of the final lines given by Hugh before he sacrifices himself to stay there in the house is she tells him keeping them in this house will keep them from everything that is bad. And his response is yes, but it will also keep them from anything good. There's, the world may be a bad place, but there's good people in it with genuine hearts to love others. He says, we need to let this house starve. I do not want it consuming anyone else, ruining any more families, any more lives, any of that stuff. And it's completely accurate to what we need to do with our sin nature and our fleshly desires is you need to let that part of your body starve. Do not feed into those temptations and those lies. They're from the devil and they will not bring anything good. You need to focus on feeding something that will actually help you to have a flourishing life. And one of the last things Steve says as we get to the end of his voiceover monologue is, I've lived with ghosts since before I knew they were there. Regrets, guilt, secrets, failings, and most times they are a wish and they can be haunted. So it really ties in well with like, you have this physical representation of a haunted house and the house in this show is often used as a metaphor uh, for a body. And they have this red room that they refer to saying, this is the heart of the house. And once we get into this final episode, we see just this black kind of representation of death that's kind of growing all around and inside of us saying like, this heart is dead. It may be the heart of the house, but it is poisoning every other aspect of the house and poisoning the lives of the people living in this house. And as I mentioned, this carries on into their adulthood and multiple of these siblings just struggle so much with their relationships, be it through unfaithfulness, just a fear of getting close and getting hurt and all these different things. And it is just beautiful to watch in the end when the family finally gets to this point where they recognize all this hurt and anger that they have held in for so long and finally reach that point with each other and the other people they are close with in their life and find that point of forgiveness and of love. And that is the main message of this show is like, it is a haunted house show, but it is a story about people and how they can be affected throughout their lives by all these different things and really feel haunted, be it real hauntings or just an emotional haunting of themselves where you are so brought down and damaged by all of this, you need to reach that point of forgiveness and redemption. And going back to what Hugh said to his wife of, they will, if they're stuck in this house, they won't experience any good. There's so much goodness that is out there and available to us. And he even says like, there are bad things out there, but it's not only the good things that shape who we are, it's those bad things. You can come out and still be stronger through the good and bad things that shape who you become. And another beautiful line, this one comes from Nell, is that forgiveness is warm, like a tear on a cheek. And that is so important for each of us to understand the importance of forgiveness. So I just want to challenge you today. If, you've earned, if you're in a place where you're feeling anger or hurt, uh, be it through something that you did to yourself or someone has done to you, seek out forgiveness. It's truly a beautifully humbling experience and is worth it in the end. Do not hold these things in for so long and it will just haunt you to the very core, but seek that forgiveness and that love that is so open and readily available to you. I hope you have enjoyed this 
kind of walkthrough and overview slash review slash please watch this show of The Haunting of Hill House. Again, it is one of my absolute favorites and I hope you have enjoyed me taking a look into it. I know there's a bunch of stuff I know there's a bunch of things that I didn't even touch on at all, but I didn't want to just overwhelm everyone with an extremely long and detailed video where I just ramble on forever. So if there's something I haven't talked about that you would like to know my opinion on, ask me in the comments down below, as well as let me know some of your favorite moments from the show. I know one of the scenes that still just nope, 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 noped me out was that zombie in the basement scene with Luke. I was like, just sitting there like, I have no idea what I would do in this situation. Another one was with Cheryl and the cats in the barn. Like, I hear those noises. Nope. I'm out. I'm not even going near that thing. <laughs> so there's, there's so much awesome things to talk about with this show from both a horror perspective and a drama perspective. So please, if you have any questions about anything I didn't address, please mention it in the comments down below and we can talk about it and I'll share my opinion and thoughts on that. I'm finally wrapping up. If you are looking to dig deeper and go further to better understand faith, film, and everything in between, you're in the right place. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any new videos. Check out another one right here and I'll see you in the next one.